man-made climate change is, according to most scientists, happening now. Leading climate experts also agree that nations have to drastically reduce emissions of greenhouse gases released from fossil fuels and need to stop cutting the forests that absorb carbon dioxide. But the world seems to be moving in the opposite direction. The challenge today is how countries can improve living standards without wrecking the planet. In Climate Challenge, we scour the world for promising schemes and new technologies, both global and local, that might make a difference. While scientists, pressure groups and politicians wrangle over targets and treaties, ordinary people are coming up with practical means to improve energy efficiency, save money and contribute towards climate stability. These have all been recognised by the Ashton Awards for Sustainable Energy, which reward and champion proven energy ideas round the world. Climate Challenge this time looks to some of the bright ideas across the world that may contribute to a cleaner energy future. Remote villages in Bangladesh are being electrified thanks to locally designed solar power systems. In the UK, waste wood from managed woodland is now heating blocks of flats more cleanly and cheaply than fossil fuel. In Malawi, a high-tech design of stove is halving the amount of wood needed to cook. And back in the UK, a school which is actually exporting power to the national grid. Camilla, Bangladesh, where villages can only be reached by boat. But their isolation hasn't stopped them getting electricity. And it's down to a Bangladeshi solar home system, designed to meet local needs. Dhaka, Bangladesh is a rapidly expanding city, and power cuts are common even here. For people in remote villages, solar power has become more reliable and cheaper than the national grid pointing the way to a decentralised and renewable future for energy generation. In rural Bangladesh, farming and fishing communities are connected by rough roads and waterways. A team from Rahima Fru's batteries is on its way to install a solar home system in a house in the village of Chokumaria, Kamila district. Nadia Rahim heads the Renewable Energy Division. The system consists of a solar panel, a lead acid battery and a charge controller circuit that manages the current going into and out of the battery to ensure it doesn't get damaged. Right here they're sort of setting the structure on the panel. What they're going to do is they're, they have to climb up on the tin roof and play, like, you know, make sure that the panel is uh, welded there well. And then they're going to bring the wires down and set the charge controller and the battery sort of centrally in the house um, so that the distribution of the lights is, is well placed. In Chokumaria, nightfall brings total darkness. The dull orange glow from kerosene lamps and candles was the only reprieve. Well, the radius of the light is not that much. It may be one meter radius and it's not really clear white light. Um, so. You can't really see that far with it, and even the light that you can, you know, even the light that you get very close to it is sort of dull yellow light. For many here, solar electricity provides an opportunity to work after dark. I like it a lot because there's no load shedding. There's no uncertainty that the light might go off at some point, and I can use it when I please, turn it off and on when necessary. A new generation is also now growing up with the chance of studying after nightfall. My name is Tanya. Tanya Akhtar. Nor is it only useful at night. This mosque has a solar electrical system to amplify the call to prayer. The Muzayin's such a fan, he's also got one at home. I can charge my mobile phone, turn the lights on when I want, watch TV and listen to the radio. It's made my life so much better. Back in Dhaka, former street children are employed to manufacture the circuits. 
Even two, three years back, uh, they were just the uh, street children. I mean, they don't have work, or they don't have uh, nothing else to do. Now they are having good salary. Uh, even uh, I mean, every month, uh, they are saving also a lot of money. So, uh, you know, that's the, that's the social change. I, mean, I would say that's, that's the social change, which is happening not only in the rural areas, it's also happening in the middle of the town area. Initially, all of the high-tech equipment making up the systems had to be imported. Rahima Fruz decided to manufacture as many components as possible in Bangladesh. This means the engineers have been able to design circuitry especially for the way these systems are used. The lead-acid batteries used to store the charge can be recycled at the plant in Dhaka, but it can be difficult to ensure all are returned from remote rural areas at the end of their life. According to Finance Ministry estimates, the 25,000 solar home systems supplied by Rahima Fruz are replacing kerosene lighting and saving between 7.5 and 9.4 thousand tonnes of carbon dioxide emissions per year. And it doesn't stop here. We're looking at small-sized solar home systems, LED-based, which will cater to a far bigger market. So um, it could easily be, be up to a million homes. Once you convince a few people to take on solar home systems and, you, and they see it working well, um, then everyone else sort of follows. Okay.